I hear the call of the stars. G'day guys, Duck Phil here. We are into game number three of the FXO Invitational Series Korean qualifiers of the uh, round of eight, I believe this game was from, between uh, uh, TSL JYP, aka TSL Smart, which I'll be referring to him as, and his opponent down here in the red, who is I am Yonghua from Team Incredible Miracle, who was uh, obviously one game number one with a brilliant little four gate who who pulled that off despite uh, Smart actually having some nice uh, Blink Stalkers in his base, but was just not enough to hold off the 4-gate. And in game number 2, we saw Smart actually taking the victory with his Blink Stalkers this time, actually doing a great job of uh, counteracting a sort of a base trade that happened. And this game, we'll see what happens. We'll s both of these guys have done something a little bit different each game. We saw, obviously, with the 4-gate and then a 3-gate Robo from Yonghua. And then in game number 2, we saw a... Uh, three gate blink and then it was I believe it was a three or was it a four gate blink it was a four gate blink from uh, from smart in game number two so just changing it up a little bit in both of the games so we'll see if these guys are going to do the same sort of thing in this particular game um, but obviously we'll have to keep an eye on what is happening so of course this is from the uh, as I said from the FX Open Korean qualifiers for the Invitational Series number four which will be taking place in the uh, I'm not exactly sure when it is but it's uh, celebrating six months of of FX Open team and of course uh, make sure you jump on Twitter send them your love and of course the other players from from uh, FXO uh, they are all on Twitter I believe and you can send them some love of course if you've been watching them in the GSTL and of course we'll see a couple of them in the uh, GSL code A uh, matches I believe um, we'll certainly see some of them competing and uh, obviously doing a great job over there as well so um, jump on Twitter and uh, give them a hoy. So for the moment here, both of these guys just doing standard sorts of builds. We have the, of course the Assimilator, the Gateway, the Cybernetic Score and uh, not too much else other than that from both of them. So for the moment, love this building positioning here from Young Hwa. It denies any sort of units from pushing in this side. A problem could be if they blink up here and uh, actually get stuck behind the mineral line. That'd be interesting for Young Hwa to deal with. But we'll see what happens. We do have this probe inside here from Smart. He's going to be just attacking some of these probes, trying to take off some shields, pull them off the mineral line as he did with this one here. And then he's perhaps, there he is, he's going for that uh, sort of Huck style mineral harass, which I believe actually started with uh, Slayer boxer but uh, he's uh, taking the minerals there he's actually had enough and he's gonna get that one out of there he's gonna have to contend with the zealot that's over here the probe has actually been reduced I think that's on one health yes it is reduced to one health this guy is a little bit of a daredevil probe he's still running around any sort of shot from these units could be deadly of course he's warped in uh, he's uh, regenerated sorry some of his shields so he's uh, gonna be okay for the moment but uh, he's gonna have to be a little bit careful perhaps and run home so over here on the side of smart we do see that two gates are up for him him. He's going to have his uh, uh, Cyberdetic Core chronoing on that uh, Warp Gate tech, which will be done in a short moment. But uh, one thing to keep in mind when you when you are playing PvP is, of course, to keep an eye on your opponent's uh, uh, Nexus and exactly how much energy they actually are using at the time. Of course, if you see no energy and uh, the Cybernetic Core is uh, just sort of spinning and, in, and you don't really see too much Chrono going on, as we do see here from Yonghua, you can assume perhaps that your opponent is uh, either... Uh, spending their chrono on their nexus to actually get out a better economy or perhaps that they've pumped it into the gateways and you may be facing some sort of uh, incredible crazy uh, zealot push which does happen from time to time not exactly common in the pro level as such as these guys but uh, it definitely can occur so keep an eye out for that sort of thing when you're in your opponent's space check out how much energy is on the nexus but we do see three gates here from Hyungwa. He's going to have a fourth perhaps in just a moment. I'm not actually sure. But it looks as if Smart is going to be coming down here with a probe. He's going to put a pylon down. The pylon is going to be on the way there because I think we have a four gate. We do indeed. Two gates have just warped in. The gate tech is, uh, the warp gate tech is now done. We're still sitting on one gas here for Yonghua, so he's uh, definitely going to be committing to one of these uh, very traditional style four gate attacks. A fourth gate is on the way for Yonghua, so he's going to try and get as many units in as he can. He has actually spotted that the uh, these units are coming down here, and a lot of stalkers are coming up the ramp. Two sentries are prepared to force field off. There they go. Shooting away at the zealots, which was stuck at the front. This guy cannot be happy. His, uh, his little shirt was damaged by those attacks. He's going to be able to regenerate his 
his uh, shields just in a second though. Attempting to bust up the ramp again. Takes some more shots there. A couple of these zealots taking a tiny bit of little uh, health damage there. This guy's going to need a band-aid. He's got 91 health left. This guy is uh, now down to 81, so he's going to need perhaps a bandage. And there goes a Stalker just pushing up the ramp there, but off to the side. We do see that a pylon was placed just off the ramp there, uh, just off the side of the cliff, and some zealots have been warped in here. Beautiful micro to make sure that the force fields stay up, keeping these Stalkers out of the battle for the moment, although a couple of them standing off to the side like angry kids at a fair who cannot get on a ride because they're too short, just poking away at some of the units as they can. But uh, it looks as if Young Warrior is going to be able to hold this perhaps just for the moment here. It depends how his warp-ins go. He's going to need to warp in the exact right amount of units and exact uh, type of units that he needs. We do see that he is starting to lose some of the shields on a lot of these units here. And in fact, it looks as if Young Warrior is uh, being pushed back just a tiny bit from that ramp. This pylon is perhaps going to go down. That's not going to be good at all for Young Warrior, but he's uh, hopefully going to have a backup one there shortly. We do see a lot of Chrono going down on these gateways and uh, four gates are still pumping away with these units. It looks as if Young Wan may start to gain a little bit of an advantage here. He does have a lot of Stalkers, and as we can see, these four Stalkers essentially stuck at the back here are kept out of the battle for the moment. The pylon does go down. One Stalker trying to get into the mineral line there, doing a little bit of harassment, and he does eventually get up the ramp. The Stalker Beast is unleashed here from Smart. He's going to try and pick away at some of these units. We do see on the health bars that a lot of these Stalkers and the sentries are low from both players. And the sentries are just getting picked off a little bit, but Young Hua decides enough is enough, bringing these probes into the battle, and he's uh, going to try and chase away some of these stalkers. The uh, leftover units there are just doing a brilliant job there for Yong Hua, so he's effectively stopped this four-gate attack. He's put himself in a nice position, of course, because he was up on the gas. He did have two gas to Yong Hua's one at the time, and now, as we can see, in fact, he actually still only has one gas actually mining. So Yong Hua is going to be in a very decent position here to uh, perhaps to per start a counter-attack if he can. We're going to see what happens. There are still a few units here with a very, very soft contain just for the moment, actually capturing out one of those stalkers like a Pokemon in a Pokeball capturing that one and he's going to pick that one off I would assume there he goes there he goes all right cool all right uh, now we're going to see perhaps uh, Smart has had enough of this he's going to be forced back because there are just way too many units here for him to contend with you're going to lose this pylon which uh, could actually no it's not going to block him but it uh, will definitely hurt him just a little bit but down it goes another pylon is being walked into to uh, save face for the moment probe is going to go out on the map. We can't actually see where this probe is going for the moment, but uh, I think he's just going to wander around the map, perhaps try and get another pylon inside the uh, the immediate vicinity of Hyunghua's base, and we'll see if uh, Smart is actually going to try something else. But a robotics is on the way here for Young Wire. He's obviously got that advantage of having that extra gas. And of course, he's got a little bit, perhaps, more production for the moment. I'm not actually sure. We actually have 25 harvesters for Young Hua to the 26th of smart so he is uh, just behind one pro but of course uh, he is definitely ahead in the actual gas and the gas spent let's have a look at the technology spending tab for the moment the tab that no one ever uses because it's incredibly useless I reckon but uh, we do see that uh, obviously the army has been spent a lot more uh, we see a lot more spending here on the army here for Smart, so he's obviously going to have to catch up for the moment. He's decided that perhaps he's going to head back to his old traditional Blink strat. He's going to get that out, and obviously he does already have a lot of stalkers. These guys are lining up like... Uh, a very nice little line of military troops waiting for inspection. They're going to see if they can inspect any of Young Wai's units coming up the side of this uh, highway here, and uh, perhaps they'll be able to shoot down at them. But for the moment, uh, Smart is doing a decent job of just keeping an eye on what is going on. It is not a time to expand, of course, in a PvP. When you are in this spot, of course, a lot of people will think, hey, I've just been deflected. Um, my forget is being deflected. Perhaps I should look to expand because the other guy will be ahead economically. You don't want to do that. You want to be prepared for anything that can happen. You want to look to try and get some tech to catch up because, of course, as we mentioned earlier, when you do a forget and that actually gets deflected, you'll be behind economically. And as we can see here, two immortals are actually going to be pumped out here for Young Hua. So he's definitely going to be in a good position. And especially considering he actually spotted that the Twilight Council was there. I think he probably saw with that observer that it was being chrono boosted. So he knows that there will probably be some bl more blink stalker pressure here from a smart once he starts. Uh, pumping down the road here as he is. Just sitting off here at the Zelnaga Watchtower, keeping an eye on things. He's probably going to try and use these Blink Stalkers to, be, to do sort of like a, a sort of threatening posture, pulling them down here. 
um, and then not actually attack it because as we can see he is actually going to go for that expansion to make me look like a fool he is going to go straight for that expansion here now that the blink tech is done obviously the blink gives him a lot of mobility with these stalkers to make sure that uh, he is on top of any sort of uh, trouble that comes his way and speaking of trouble this pylon will go down as we can see there and uh, we'll see what Youngblood's plan is for the moment. Attempting to blink inside the base, doesn't actually get inside. I would say that was partially due to that nice positioning of those gateways there, just to make sure that no units can uh, get across to the side. The probe has uh, had its day as well, and it looks as if we may have a push coming along here from Yonghua. He does have a very sizable army here. He is uh, just a few units up for the moment on top of uh, of Smart. Smart using that blink and blinking that stalker away very, very cleverly. And we do see that this push is going Going to come along here. There are a couple of sentries in here for some guardian shields, which will definitely help out. And it looks as if Young Hwai is going to try and uh, perhaps keep an eye on the top there at the uh, top of the cliff. He does know that those units are there, of course, with that observer that he was able to get out with that earlier robo. He can keep an eye on what is happening. But look, just down here, we actually have stalkers that somehow got inside the main of Young Hwai. They are taking out some of these probes. These uh, these uh, zealots, not sure what they're doing. They can't actually get inside. That's exactly what I was mentioning before about Blink Stalkers getting into this position here and it looks as if the uh, Nexus was actually destroyed so no expansion for uh, Smart at the moment but he certainly does have enough to sort of deflect this attack for the moment I would say but it's going to be very very hard for him to do that because he does have to worry about this uh, this Stalker attack inside his main he's lost a lot of probes as we'll see there he's uh, blicking those Stalkers back but a little bit of uh, damage going on at the front here from Young Hwai he's uh, pulling those Stalkers into position Blinks inside there is the Blink he does have vision, of course, with the Immortal and the Observers that were up the top there. There's some of these Stalkers losing a lot of their health. We do see on the health bars that actually he is in a decent position, of course, with that Immortal off to the side. He will be very, very nicely defended if uh, if Smart actually gets in a good spot with these Stalkers. And in fact, some, still some beautiful Blinks here from both of these players jumping on top of each other with the Blink and then uh, blinking away with some of the wounded units. He's uh, doing a nice job. The Immortal perhaps being wasted, shooting away at that pylon. If he can take it out, it's not going to actually matter because the pylon is actually being powered over here as well. Chrono's going down on all of the gateways here for, for Smart, so he's going to try and get everything back up and running. Now, both of these players, keep in mind, are getting actually quite low in their uh, mineral patches in both bases, and of course, Youngmire has actually lost a lot of his work as he's down to 16 probes to the 26 of Smart. So Smart, whilst he's still in a nice position from uh, from an economical point of view, he's actually going to need to long distance mine some of these probes, I would assume, and there he goes. He's going to need to get some long distance mining going and save up 400 minerals and then get uh, some sort of attack, uh, some sort of uh, nexus up and running if he can. But looks as if DTs are uh, going to be the path of choice for Yang Hua for the moment. He obviously has uh, some good detection covering the map. He's got an observer over here. There are no observers out for Smart at the moment, but he does have a robo sitting here at the back. There are probes wandering around the map from both players. Check this out. These guys are just the uh, the, the lone probes just hanging around. And uh, we do see that Yang Hua is uh, trying to boost up his uh, harvesters for the moment. He's up to 19, still quite far behind. He's uh, still doing his best. An observer is on. On the way from Smart, he's going to have something to detect to detect those DTs once they come out onto the map. Perhaps we'll see a pro put down a pylon over here to warp in those DTs when they are coming into effect. But it looks as if an attack may occur here from Smart. I would not say that's the smartest idea. There you go. There's the first pun I've done, given his name. Um, so we will uh, you'll probably see him pull back. Yeah, he's going to pull back. A lot of these stalkers are actually quite low on health, as you can see here. Once those shields go down, those guys are going to be dead in the uh, in no time. And as we see, an observer is finally out. He's going to be able to check up on the top of the cliff here. We do see he does have the, that vision there. He will be able to blink in if necessary. He sees that there's a few units here actually sniping off an observer of Young Hua, and now Young Hua has said that is not cool bro, I am coming into the fight now, bringing those stalkers off the cliff with his own blink, and then actually uh, going to need to be careful with what he does here, he obviously has a superior force with, these, with the Immortal brought in, the stalkers and the zealots as well, providing a lot of damage, and now he does have an observer along with him as well, so both of these guys, uh, you know, in fact actually no, that's an observer is smart, my bad. But um, both of these guys, in fact, there we go. <laughs> it came there eventually. An observer eventually got there. But uh, long distance mining is uh, is smart. He's uh, still going all the way across to that mineral patch. He's only got this tiny one left over with 60 minerals in it for the moment. This is going absolutely crazy. I'm a bit surprised that uh, that Youngwire is still mining here. He's lost a little bit of efficiency. He's perhaps a few 
Uh, he's got a few too many probes there for the moment. Somehow this pylon is still alive from Smart, but uh, he's going to need to be very careful. I believe the DTs may be on the way. Has he actually walked any in yet? No, he hasn't. I don't think so. But uh, no DTs for the moment from Yonghua, but he's uh, definitely got a, a Zealot in there, has decided to walk up the ramp, sees that there is some long distance mining going on from Smart, but he's going to need to be very, very careful with what he does here. If uh, he, oh, ooh, he actually does have a decent sized Stalker army there, blinking away because he does see that there is a great, great army of Stalkers there along the way from Yonghua, and actually coming in to try and intercept those Stalkers before they can get home. If Yonghua can actually do a Stalker Donut and blink up on top of these units, he can catch some of them, but now with an Immortal out, these forces are actually quite even in, in terms of their strength for the moment here. Whilst uh, Yonghua does seem to have a few more Stalkers, he is uh, he does now have an Immortal in the mix here, which will definitely give him a little bit of an advantage, and Smart actually has three Sentries, which will definitely help with the Guardian Shield, and uh, we'll see what happens here in this battle. This probably is going to be the final battle of this particular game. Probes are probably going to need to get into this fight if they're uh, going to be in the way. And in the way they are, we do see that Yonghua is coming along. He's going to try and uh, push into these probes and take some of them out. Try to lure out these forces of Smart. And Smart is just sitting there in the corner. He's uh, not caring too much exactly what is happening here. A bit surprised he hasn't put that Immortal at the front. Perhaps to get uh, a little bit more damage in. But perhaps bringing down these probes would be a good idea now as well. But effectively, what Yonghua has done is denied these probes from mining here so smart is essentially stuck on exactly what he has and uh, obviously a little bit of gas income but that is about it so we'll see what the plan is here from young Hwa. Is he going to push in or is he just going to wait out here for the moment? I'm a bit surprised he didn't actually warp in any DTs to help out here. Could perhaps send in one to distract up in the main and then uh, commence the battle. And But we <laughs> see they're just sort of posturing f uh, at the moment here trying to figure out who is going to go in first. As we mentioned in, uh, in some of the other games, we actually mentioned where one player would not want to attack. But here we go. It is on. Guardian Shields going off. Some force fields brilliantly placed there by Smart pushing some of these Stalkers out of the battle, and in fact, some of the, the Zealots as well. And as we can see there, the army trade was not good for Smart, despite that fantastic force fields uh, that went down. He's actually lost some of the units, now losing probes as well. The, the uh, mini meat shields here, he is going to push out, he is going to commence again here. The probes getting into the battle, the Stalkers are doing a lot of damage for Smart, taking out some of these Zealots. But the Immortal stuck in the front is not doing too much damage, but it did take some of those units out. Stalker Donut there from Young. While jumping on top, creating a nice little sexy circle there with those stalkers. And now Yonghua is in a fantastic lead for the moment. Here's, of course, mining back at home, long distance, as you can see on the minimap. But that is about it. GG from Smart, and he is uh, going to have to sit this one out. Yonghua progresses through into the round of four, I believe it is. Don't actually quote me on that, I can't actually remember, but he's uh, going to progress through to the next round of the FXO Invitational Series number four Korean qualifiers, and we'll see what happens in the next series. So if you did watch some of these series, uh, or if you saw some of them, or you heard some news about some of these other games, do not worry. I'll be trying to uh, cast some more of them, and we'll put them up shortly. Thank you very much, guys. Cheers.